Good morning, Wind Chasers, and welcome to another episode of Chasing the Wind. Uh, a special kind of holy week, uh, Chasing the Wind, for you. And I want to talk just very briefly this morning, or whenever you're watching this, about a day that we kind of forget about regarding Holy Week. Now you say, wait a minute, what's Holy Week? Holy Week is the week after, between Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday. Now, um, so like Palm Sunday, we call it Palm Sunday, but it's also Passion Sunday. And uh, at my church, what I like to do is I like to read the whole liturgy of the palms and then also read the liturgy of the Passion because some people will not make it to a Good Friday service, so they may not hear about... Um, hear the whole story of the crucifixion. It's like we go from the parade to the resurrection. We miss the stuff in between that is a little, um, the stuff that we don't always like to hear about, but we need to hear about. And so as you, um, this will be coming out probably Monday. So it's Monday morning of Holy Week. Hopefully it does anyway. Um, I hope that you'll take some time to do a little, maybe some research and sitting with it. But think about, uh, there's, there's Maundy Thursday, which is about a new command I give you. It's when Jesus commanded his disciples to love one another. And there was the foot washing and the whole nine yards that went on there. And then we go to Good Friday and, and we say, well, what's so good about it? Well, it's good in the sense that Christ, what Christ did on the cross for us, it was good for us. It might not have been good for him, but it was good for us. It doesn't seem good, but sometimes things that don't seem good uh, sometimes are what's best. But then there's this other day that I want to just talk to you briefly about this morning called, um, it's called Holy Saturday. And we forget about Holy Saturday um, because we just kind of, you know, if we do recognize a Good Friday service or if you go to a Tenebrae service, if you can go to a Tenebrae service, those are very, very meaningful on a Good Friday evening, Good Friday night. But one of the fascinating things about a, a Tenebrae service is at the end of it, when it is, it is dark, you were to go home and exit the sanctuary or wherever you're having this, this tenebrae service, you were to go home in silence, recognizing that you're, the, the Messiah, the person you've been following, is, is, has been crucified, is dead. And, you, and for all intents and purposes, if we were to go back and be one of the disciples, we would say, wait a minute here, this, this, we'd be mourning, we'd be in grief, we'd be in shock that this person who we have followed for three years is gone and, and everything he, we were hoping for with him is just, is just shattered because we, we don't understand. It's, it happens a lot with death, doesn't it? Especially a death that maybe we have not been prepared for looking at. And so I can imagine that on Good, on Good Friday night after they had prepared, uh, they'd taken uh, Jesus and, and buried him quickly, they, did, you know, they had to do everything quickly, but when we get to Luke's uh, gospel uh, and Jesus' burial in Luke 23, and I want to jump to uh, verse 55, it says, The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph, that is Joseph of Arimathea, who had put Jesus in his uh, a burial plot that he had, a hole in the wall, if you will. Uh, they followed Joseph and saw the tomb, and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. And the Sabbath would have been that Saturday. So here's an interesting thing. You know, God's timing isn't always our timing, is it? God, God really couldn't you have done this on Thursday, so we could have done something on Friday and done this whole thing. But no, now we got to go home and we have to sit and we have to wait. We have to rest. I finished reading a book recently, and I've been going through a 40-day Lenten uh, path, a journey, if you will, that follows this book. And it's a, they're saying it's going to be a classic. Is a, bo a book by Pete Grieg, I think, or Grieg, I think his name is, Howard it is. It's called uh, God on Mute. Um, it's, it's, going, it's about our faith when we don't hear God speak. 
I was challenged this week as, as he's broken up these 40 days looking at Good Friday and then Holy Saturday. I'm in the time right now of Holy Saturday. And, and it's the time, as he describes it, when our questions are not answered. We don't have answers to our questions. Those are our Holy Saturdays, metaphorically speaking, in our lives. And we have those Holy Saturdays when we don't hear God's voice. And, and one of the devotions this week spoke to me in, in, in this Holy Saturday kind of section that he's talking about. One of the questions he, he suggests we ask ourselves to reflect upon the times when we have not heard God's voice, but we still see God working and moving. And how can, can we go with that without, well, God, I, know I, I go through those times and it drives me absolutely crazy. I'm like, God, would you just say something? But I see him doing stuff and it's, and it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. And so just like these women, they went home and they rested on the Sabbath. And sometimes I'm going to tell you, when we're in those times when our questions are not answered, those, those times when we have a lot of those questions, when we're maybe in this time of grief and frustration and hurt and anger, that we just take a holy Saturday. And a holy Saturday, I'm not talking about a whole day. You might take a whole day. What you're supposed to do on holy Saturday, if you're following really the, the church here, is on holy Saturday, you're supposed to wear black as though you were in mourning. And you are really not supposed to go shopping and getting ready for Easter dinner and anything like that. You're really supposed to take that day and sit in reflection about what in the world just happened, God. It doesn't make sense. You have those moments in your life? I got a little passion behind this because I've had those Good Friday nights, those Good Fridays in my life where I'm like, God, I just don't get what is going on here. Sometimes it even goes to the point where you're in a dark night of the soul. That'll be another, another thing I talk about sometime. But then sometimes we just need those holy Saturdays where what we do is we just rest. We say, you know what, I just need to sit with this. And that's what they were forced to do. Remember, they're, they're Jewish. These were Jewish followers. They weren't Christians. <laughs> they were, but they weren't. They weren't called that till you get into the book of Acts. All they know is that the guy that they've been following for three years, that they had put all their hope in, that that appeared to be crushed. You ever been in those moments where it just feels like everything's done? Let me suggest to you have a Holy Saturday. And a Holy Saturday can be a few moments. I just said to a friend of mine the other day, uh, just take a breather. Just take a breather. Just rest. Just sit. It's okay to do that once in a while. You don't have to medicate. You don't have to do uh, retail therapy. You don't have to do uh, TV therapy, anything like that. You know, sometimes it's okay to just sit with your feelings and what's going on and to lean into it instead of run away from it and try to medicate it. So let me suggest to you to this, this Holy Week that you really engage what happens from the time that, that Jesus makes his triumphal entry and look for yourself in Holy Week. You might be the one who's cheering Jesus on on Palm Sunday and you might find yourself the one yelling, crucify him on Friday. But may you find on Easter Sunday new life. Because Easter is when the, prayer, the answers come. And we have Good Friday moments. I'm, I'm talking metaphorically here. We have Good Friday moments. We have Holy Saturday moments. But we skim over Holy Saturday. It's just another day. Oh yeah, just get ready for Easter. Get the eggs ready for the kids and yada, yada, yada. Let me suggest to you, maybe you try this week to have a Holy Saturday, and, and they can be five minutes. They can just be, I need to go for a walk. I need to ponder what, what is going on in my own life. I need to ponder what is going on in, in Scripture with this whole, maybe you're not a believer and you just happen to stumble upon this and you're saying, man, I don't get this whole thing with Jesus. You know what, Rita? 
You know, I, I love when people say, well, you shouldn't read that book. Well, why? What's wrong with it? Well, I don't know. I've never read it, but I heard. I don't want you to hear. Go to the scripture and read it. Go to someone who knows Jesus if you need some questions. If you have, Why do you follow Jesus? Ask him. But take that Holy Saturday and say, Jesus, tell me what's going on with this because I'd like to know you. I'd like to have a relationship, but I don't do. And then Easter will come. Resurrection will come. You can be raised a new life. Just like God raised Jesus, God will raise you to new life in Jesus if you, we give and we turn to him. We give our lives to him and we turn to him and receive what he did on Good Friday. We need to sit and ponder it sometimes and just like, wow, God has really, really, really been good to me. Soren Kierkegaard said, and I'm paraphrasing here, I think John Maxwell puts it this way too. We live life looking forward. We understand it looking backwards. Sometimes I, I was on my deck this morning having coffee early this morning. It was still kind of dark. And I was pondering this morning after uh, um, I was thanking God how he spoke to me through a, a, one of the YouTube channels I watch. And a person talked about his failure and how he gotten fired and all these things were going wrong in his life. But he goes, and he was talking about how he came through it. And I don't know if he's a believer or not. It doesn't matter. But it inspired me. And I found myself this morning reflecting on how I was so afraid to walk away from one thing and God kind of had to pull me out of it, to be honest with you. And I thought, man, my life is just done, you know. And he says, no, he goes, I got more for you. And God has blessed me. I think about that. That's those scriptures in the Psalms that talk about God restoring the fortunes of Israel. And um, Lord, I've never had a fortune, trust me, and I still don't. But the idea of how God has blessed me in so many ways that I could never have imagined. Take your holy Saturday. Allow yourself to just sit. Maybe you need to go hop on your horse and go for a ride out in the, in the, in the woods. Whatever. Maybe you need to go for a walk in the woods. Maybe whatever you need to do to have your holy Saturday where you can just sit with what's going on in your life. We'll sit with what God's doing in your life. But have your Holy Saturday. Let that be a part of your Holy Week as you prepare for the most wonderful thing that had ever happened was the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because if he is raised from the dead, we can be too. Folks, <clears throat> blessed Easter and Holy Week to you. And may it be just an incredible, incredible week for you. Incredibly blessed. This Pastor Mark signing off. Grace and peace to you. Keep chasing the wind because the wind is chasing you.